Hi, Bill here with Stamplistic. This is the first of a series of videos that I'm going to be doing talking about metallic gilding polish by Creative Expressions. We've been traveling the United States this past year from the East Coast to the West Coast, from the North to the South, doing scrapbooking and stamping shows. Uh, and we've met and demonstrated this product to a, a wide variety of people. And one of the things that I've heard is that they can't remember the things that I've shown them when they get home. So here we go. The metallic gilding polish comes in 31 different colors, vibrant blues, greens, yellows, uh, purples, as well as some pastels, some green pastel, blue pastels. Uh, so it has a color to just about need, meet any need. It's a water-based product uh, that is very creamy and very fast drying, as you'll see when as I apply this. When you're applying the, the polish to a sponge, try not to dip it into the sponge. You don't want a lot of excess polish on the outside edges. So pull the polish out of the jar, kind of use that ski slope and pull it out of the jar. Pull the excess off of the sponge, so it looks like that. And then apply it either in a single direction or in a swirl motion like this. When you're applying it in a swirl motion as I am currently, what you end up with is a some nice definition to the uh, to the project itself. You can buy you can usually buy plain flat colored paper, but what you can't get is a paper with a dimension like this. Now as soon as that's dry, and this is already drying, you can use a crumpled up paper towel. Just give it a quick buffing and that'll bring out the shimmer even more than what we started with. And you can probably, hopefully you can see that shimmer to this. Now, once you have this done with our white cardstock, you can die cut it if you'd like to. You can also um, emboss it. Now, I rarely will die cut after I've colored. And the main reason, let me pull the die and show you why. If I did that, I colored this and I'm going to throw all the rest of this away. So what I would almost always do is color my die cut after I've cut it. But here's one that I just embossed. I would emboss after I color. And you can see the butterflies embossed on this. It gives you a very good definition, very good coverage. You don't have to worry about getting into all the small little spaces after you've embossed. Plus it makes the paper or the cardstock very pliable, very flexible. It stretches the, the, um, the polish at the same time you're stretching the paper and it gives it a very nice sheen. So I always emboss after I color, but I color after I die cut. So here's a piece of 110 pound cardstock that I've uh, die cut. And now I'm going to color this. And let's use a different color. Let's, let's pull up some of this green. This is pistachio green. And again, I'm going to pull some up onto my sponge. I don't need very much on my sponge, but I'm going to work it into my sponge. I like to say that I want it in the sponge, not on the sponge. Once I have that done, I can just dab it on my die cut. Now, depending on how delicate your die cut is, you can use quite a bit of pressure to make this happen. But you can see how fast that it colors the die cut. Now, there's an added advantage to doing this also, because once I have it die cut and I'm applying my color after it's cut, I'm also coloring the edges of my die cut also, which makes a big difference when you're looking at your project. If you would color first and then die cut, you're going to have white edges, and now I've got colored edges. So color after your die cut, emboss after your color. I mentioned earlier in the video that there's 31 colors. This gives you a good idea of what the colors look like, or the range of colors 
that, that are available in the uh, metallic gilding polishes. Everything from chocolate bronze to some graphites and some, uh, some silvers to blues and purples, pinks, bronzes, greens, yellows. So there's a significant range of colors that are available. Um, all of them metallic, all of them water-based, all of them very creamy, all of them with very good coverage. Uh, the coverage is equally well on uh, cardstock as it is on um, chipboard. As everybody knows, chipboard is very thirsty, very hard to color. This colors chipboard extremely well. Uh, most of the colors will cover in one coat, uh, but on chipboard sometimes a, a second or even a third coat uh, is, uh, is required to actually bring out the color on the chipboard. I've got a piece of chipboard here, and let me show you exactly what it looks like when you're coloring chipboard. I'm pulling up my polish, wiping off all the excess from the sponge. I'm only going to do half of this piece of chipboard so you'll be able to see exactly how fast and what kind of coverage you get on the chipboard. But this is just a single coat, and this happens to be red bronze. And you can see the coverage with just a single coat on chipboard. Now, since this is already getting to the point that it's dry, I've got a lot on my fingers, but I can put a second coat on. And that's about all I would need to do a very nice job of coloring chipboard. And if you want to make that look just a little bit more like bronze, I'll wait for this to dry. Buff it just a bit. And it's going to be nice and glossy. It almost looks like copper at this point. This is one of my favorite project, products to use on chipboard because it just does such a good job of coverage and coloring the chipboard itself. 